The Porsche Boxster has only ever had two serious problems. One of them is idiots on the internet who think they know what a sports car should be like without ever having driven one and they say nasty things behind its beautiful back. The second was Porsche's ridiculous decision a few years ago to stick a four-cylinder soulless cube of propulsion into the middle of it. But with this, the new 2020 Boxster GTS, they fixed it. Uh, we can't really fix the people problem, but hopefully in the next five or six minutes, I'll be able to convince you to help me fix the Boxster perception issue. Anyway, let's go and drive it. So what has Porsche done to make the new Boxster GTS a GTS? Well, not an awful lot, to be honest. The suspension is exactly the same as the standard 2 litre and 2.5 litre 718 that we've been used to. The main difference is that, well, the rear suspension springs are slightly stiffer, but it's the reason they're stiffer that's important. They're stiffer because they have to support the weight of the 4 litre 6 cylinder engine that we now have, which sounds like this. Oh yeah! Wow! Yeah, I'm going to slow down so you can hear me. It's incredible. It's basically the 4-litre engine lifted straight out of the 718 Spider, aka the soft top version of the Cayman GT4. All they've done to reduce the power slightly is they've lowered the rev limit to 7,700 RPM, which still feels stratospheric and is naturally aspirated. It's got loads of torque. 395 horsepower and it's just an absolutely wonderful wonderful engine in a world where everything's gone turbocharged and automatic a manual six-cylinder boxster is an unbelievably good tonic yeah this is a magnificent car i'm going to put my window up what it really boils down to this car is a selection of things you could probably order on a normal boxster such as reduced ride height and things like that that just make it a bit more driver focused but the story is all about that engine it's a magnificent magnificent thing and it puts the boxster exactly back where it should be after all these years in the wastelands of having a four cylinder read any review of a four cylinder boxster and they will say magnificent car mediocre engine now it's got one of the best engines porsche has made in the past five years probably do the maths for yourself can't you <laughs> Woo! it's nice to have a manual so let's talk about that manual gear shift I don't want to be one of these bores that says every car would be better with a manual gearbox because it's just not true there are plenty of horrid manual gearboxes out there and not every car is better with one this this is it, you get the same shift mechanism that you get in the GT4 and the 718 Spider but you get a slightly longer throw to make it a bit less race car feel and a bit more easy to live with in town. But it's still one of the best manual gear shifts. Porsche don't do bad manual gear shifts. Not anymore, anyway. And it's just a delight. You heel and toe, you can put the auto blip on if you want to. I've got the roof down, I've got that noise. <coughs> and I've got a cough. It's so good! I always think Porsches don't sound that good on video, but get in one and it's such a guttural bellow of a noise. It's like a slightly raspy German yodeling in your ear. It's lovely. However, let's talk about the 718 Boxster GTS's problems. And it does have a couple, it's not perfect. For a start, 718 Boxster GTS, the name is far too long. It's written on the back in a whole black badge thing, and it takes up half the car. The gearing is also too long, and this is a criticism you'll level at pretty much any modern Porsche sports car. I don't know why they do it, might be an emissions thing, but you'll live 
in second gear and third gear on a twisty country road especially if you want to hear the noise i'm doing 50 miles an hour and i've just shifted into second yeah second gear tops out at 80 miles an hour that's too long porsche at least give us the option to fit like a sprint gearbox for extra sportiness i want to enjoy this engine all the time and your gearbox kind of gets in the way a bit as lovely as the manual shift is that's pretty much it for the floors other technical bits you get limited slip differ standard you get active engine mounts as standard you get a 10 no you get a 20 millimeter suspension drop as standard and if you want to you can put that back up 10 mil so you only get a 10 mil drop i don't know why you'd want to do that i'm on bumpy roads i've not been hitting the ground at all what else can I tell you about it? The brakes are 30 millimeters smaller than on the 718 Spider, but they're still, they still stop the car really, really quickly. So I don't think that's a miss. This car's 70 odd thousand pounds, but you can definitely get one for a price starting with a six, if you are careful. I wouldn't say any of the options on this car are essential performance options. The basic car is all you need three-point turn. Reversing camera, very helpful. Right, anything else I need to say about this car? This is a bit where I'm professional and I get my phone out. Oh, you can get it with an automatic gearbox. But why would you? If you couldn't tell from all my childish squealing there, this is an utterly, utterly amazing car. Porsche's done something incredible by giving the 718 the six-cylinder engine it's wanted for ages. And what an engine! Like four litres, naturally aspirated, convertible, manual. It's just the perfect sports car recipe. If you can afford one, go and get one, like, right now. Like, go! Go over there where those horses are staring at me. And go and buy one. Those horses might have one. Probably not. I don't think they're a licensed Porsche dealer. But honestly, go and get one. Ignore the people on the internet who say, eh, you should get a Cayman because it's got a stiffer chassis. Mm. The whole point of this is you're not on the ragged edge the whole time but it still feels amazing. You can hear everything, you can smell the horses, you can hear the horses. It's all about the horses, it's not about the horses. It's just a very good car. Go and buy one. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, click on the bell thing, and do all that stuff. I'm gonna go and stroke some horses. Goodbye, horses. Can't drive a Boxster because my, my balls, they're just too big. Shut up. Go and try one. If you've never driven a Porsche Boxster, you'll get into it and think, oh my God, I've been slagging these off for years.